Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this video, I'm going to, I guess, answer um, quite a few questions that I get via email regarding uh, my fundamental analysis uh, spreadsheets and, um, you know, its usefulness and why you would need a fundamental analysis spreadsheet, etc., etc. So, um, and also as well, one of the questions that I get is, uh, is uh, can I... Um, you know, just basically sell the fundamental analysis spreadsheet. And the answer to that is no. And there's a reason for it. I mean, I could sell it, you know, if you if you really wanted it, but I choose not to for um, really uh, a reason that I'll probably get into at the end of the video. So uh, fundamental analysis, first of all, is just really the understanding of um, an asset's uh, value, right? So, um, uh, currencies have an exchange rate value. Um, commodities have an ex have an, have a value, um, and that's really based off of things like you know supply and demand. Um, you know stocks have a value, right? And there are um, there are things that determine you know um, an asset you know an asset's value, right? And again, currencies are no different. Now in currency land, um, there are. Um, uh, I guess the you know macroeconomic data will uh, determine um, I guess the uh, the value of a currency and whether it should appreciate or depreciate you know in the future. And one of the things that I've discovered is uh, how to determine um, um, I guess a currency's value over the years is by looking at you know three main things. There are more uh, things to look at macroeconomic data to look at. There's you know loads of macroeconomic data, matter of fact. But it really all boils down to three main things, which are inflation um, and um, GDP, as well as interest rates. Yeah, so those are the three main um, uh, macroeconomic data points that I use. And um, in fact, I do have a video that I created uh, back in uh, 2019 called uh, Forex Fundamental Analysis Course, Euro Dollar Strategy in Under uh, 60 Minutes, which really kind of breaks down um, uh, why I was trading the Euro Dollar for about maybe about a year and a half, uh, nearly two years going short. And I've got a recent one, um, uh, which I recorded on the 19th of uh, August 2022, this year, uh, a few weeks ago, basically going over pretty much the same thing, right? And this is all uh, down to understanding um, with the assistance of, uh, well, understanding fundamentals and with the assistance of the fundamental analysis spreadsheet and how, you know, using the fundamental analysis spreadsheet, you can forecast uh, massive trends, right? And uh, really ride trends and predict trends before they happen. Anyways, the fundamental analysis spreadsheet is really, I guess, it boils down to a visual representation, a, a visual, let me get uh, you know, my words out, a visual representation of uh, currency value. And so currencies uh, in Forex are ex uh, traded in pairs, yeah? Meaning that you're trading one currency against another. So um, you need to understand why one currency would appreciate or depreciate against another currency. And again, it boils down to understanding um, fundamental principles, um, interest rates, inflation, uh, and GDP. But also as well, not only, and I guess I'll zoom in a bit, right? And this is the fundamental analysis spreadsheet um, or one of the tabs in the fundamental analysis spreadsheet that we use uh, to determine um, uh, you know, which currencies to really uh, look to trade, right? Now, what you've got is, uh, um, I guess, these uh, uh, categories on the top, right? You've got the pair, you've got strength divergence, interest uh, divergence, you've got B and Q, which stands for base and quote currency, interest rates, and then you've got bias, which is basically my bias. L stands for long, N stands for neutral, which means I'm not looking to trade uh, those currencies and uh, S stands for uh, short, and that gets updated as and when. Now, um, the numbers, right? So the base and the quote currency, you'll see, for example, Australian dollar is ranked number one, or has a number one uh, next to it, and the quote currency, which is the yen, has number eight on it, right? Now, um, 
those uh, that that data and that, those rankings um, are basically based off of um, the currency pairs that we trade, right? So we're trading eight currencies, which is the dollar, the euro, the pound, the yen, the Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar, the Swiss franc, and the Canadian dollar, right? And that would make up eight currencies. So, and so as currencies are trading in pairs, it's, you know, it's, it's essential that you know which currency is probably going to be the strongest out of those eight and which is going to be the weakest, right? Hence, we've got some, you know, a tab called the strength divergence. Now, number one, right, would typically represent strength and eight would typically represent uh, weakness, but that is not always the case. But if we're just looking at the data, right, that we look at, which is derived from our economic data tab, and I'm not going to get into that, um, and because it would really be unfair for the for the traders that have signed up to the mentoring course, um, how we determine, you know, strength and weakness of the currency and what data we specifically look at. Um, but just understand that this tab here in the pairs tab. Um, you know, shows, you know, the, the, the potential for strength uh, versus versus weakness, right? And so um, understanding that, yeah, if you have a currency that is ranked number one and a currency that is ranked number eight, then what you should see on a price chart, yeah, is traders buying the base currency, yeah, and really selling the quote currency, which should, you know, derive on a price chart you know, a trend. And I'm not saying it's going to be a perfect trend. Who knows, right? But over a specific amount, a certain amount of time, you should, as long as the fundamentals, you know, stay the same um, uh, and continue to stay the same, you should see, you know, a trend. And again, if you want to go to, uh, you know, the, um, the videos that I have put on YouTube, for example, uh, you know, again, the Forex fundamental analysis, uh, do a Google search for that or a YouTube search for that video, as well as, you know, this uh, title as well. If you go into my YouTube uh, page, you'll see exactly um, that working, you know, in action consistently, right? So the fundamental analysis spreadsheet pretty much is telling you uh, that the, um, the Australian dollar should continue to appreciate um, and the Japanese yen is going to be the worst out of the eight and uh, will, is likely to, you know, devalue, right? Now, again, that is not always the case. That is not 100% the case because if it was, what trade, how traders kind of get um, uh, or misunderstand is that they try to use the logic of uh, of technical analysis and try to overlay that on fundamental analysis, meaning that fundamental analysis is actually a bit dynamic or more dynamic than just saying using the if then logic. Yeah, so a lot of um, uh, technical analysis traders will say if this then that and then that's it you know they don't want to you know think dynamically or or think deeply about actually what is happening and the other factors that could contribute to um to uh, uh value actually changing and so one of the uh you know in conjunction with the fundamental analysis spreadsheet that we use we also understand the currency value cycle yeah, the currency value cycle is very, very, very important. So there's many traders out there that are going to be watching this and trying to create their own uh, fundamental analysis spreadsheet. You know, um, best of luck to you guys. And I hope that it does work out for you. And I do mean that sincerely. If you can create a fundamental analysis spreadsheet that works for you, that's basically, you know, um, that's, that's brilliant, right? But what traders typically are missing is the fact that they don't understand the, the currency value cycle and the currency value cycle is understanding this is that currencies and everything moves in cycles whether it's not just currencies again stocks bonds um crypto everything right everything has a cycle yeah life has a cycle right so um and everything in life has a cycle so if you don't understand the currency value cycle there are going to be times where you're going to get you know, you're, you're likely to get caught off guard if you're only looking specifically at the data, because what the data is telling you is what is, you know, is 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 uh, going on today or what present value is. 
But understanding fundamental analysis is also understanding future value. If you can understand where you are, yes, fine, excellent. We understand that, you know, the Australian dollar is a potential buy. But if you don't understand that there are certain changes on the horizon that may cause the Australian dollar to be a sell, yeah, or, you know, a currency that is ranked, you know, one, two or three, a potential sell, then there are going to be periods when you're using the fundamental analysis spreadsheet where you're going to be caught offside and you're going to be scratching your head as wondering, well, the fundamental analysis spreadsheet said that this was a buy because it's number one right and so i should always continue to buy number one that, that you know that, that logic doesn't make any sense it would mean if you continue to always buy number one then um there would be no you know cycle right or you might be late to the cycle because data uh, and economic data unfortunately does lag and that doesn't it doesn't mean it's a bad thing just because it lags in terms of um, when it's released doesn't mean it's a bad thing it just means that you know for example trying to calculate gdp um, takes a lot of work you know economists have to go through sift through you know so much data to then determine whether the economy grew or didn't grow right so there's a lot of data that has to come out to determine um, certain macroeconomic data points it doesn't mean that it's it's lagging in so far as you know it's a bad thing as i said it's just a case of that's just the way you know that that data has to be um you know churned i guess and and and, and presented right so understanding future value is very important yeah and keeping your finger on the pulse is very important and if you don't understand that yeah and you're not aware of that there are times when a currency that is actually ranked number one, yeah, on the spreadsheet, right, or on my spreadsheet, or even your own spreadsheet, right, depending on what data you're looking at, or two or three, which we would, you know, typically say is a buy and usually is a buy, yeah, there are times when, in fact, it could be a sell, right? It could actually uh, uh, see devaluation, right? And in the same way that a currency that has been devaluing for a while, yeah, could actually start to revalue. So a currency that is ranked six, seven or eight, yeah, could actually start to revalue. Yeah, revalue. One of the reasons, right, that a currency actually starts to revalue and devalue is the fact that currency appreciation, right, or an expensive currency can actually hurt growth. So you see this box down here, right here. If we focus right here and we look at, in fact, a currency um, a currency appreciation. The currency has ranked one, two, three on, on the spreadsheet, yeah? If a currency keeps appreciating and gets very expensive, the one of the knock-on effects of that is that um, it, it, uh, an expensive currency um, means that the currency, uh, you, you, the, cu the country has expensive exports, yeah, and that actually hurts um, GDP growth. So think of it in terms of, um, you know, you going shopping on a high street, yeah. Now, or actually, in matter of fact, you owning a business, right? You so you own a business, yeah. Now. You've got three businesses that are in direct competition with your business. So there's four of you. You've got three other businesses or two other businesses. It doesn't really matter, right? Or you've got a direct competitor. And all your direct competitors who are selling, let's say, for example, you own a car dealership, yeah? And you're selling cars because that's what basically exports are. It's basically what a country exports, what a country sells to other countries. Imports and exports, what you buy, what you take in, and what you sell, export. Now, imagine, um, you know, you're selling cars and the cars that you sell, yeah, everyone's selling the same cars, yeah, you and your competitors are selling the same cars at, at your dealerships, but your cars are more expensive than everybody else's, yeah, that is going to give your competitors, right, a direct advantage because customers, right, are going to come in and they're going to look at your cars and they're going to say, hmm, okay, you know, that car's pretty expensive. I can buy probably the same car or something similar down the road at, you know, competitor A, B or C, yeah, for a cheaper price, right? So that's basically why, and, you know, uh, an expensive currency 
right, and a currency that appreciates too much can actually hurt exports, which then hurts GDP growth, right? In the same way that if you've got, you're selling whatever it is, it could be peanuts, it could be beds, it could be toothpaste, who knows, right? You could be providing a service. If your service is is too expensive, you're not gonna stay in business for long. It's gonna hurt your bottom line. Basically, it's the same thing with currencies and countries, yeah? And exports and GDP growth. So if you don't understand that, yeah, going back to, or you're not aware of it, and going back to the fundamental analysis spreadsheet, then you're you obviously you're going to be caught on the wrong side of the market at some point in time. Now, the whole point in fundamental analysis, again, as I said before, is to understand not only current um, uh, value but also future value. This is the reason why you hear the term, um, you know, something is being priced in. Yeah, uh, the value of that of that asset or the price of that asset is something is being priced in. It's because um, the market is looking at an asset or an exchange rate, knows what's coming on the horizon, maybe certain changes, or maybe just a continuation, yeah? And sees the current value as being either, ex you know, cheap or expensive. And if it's cheap, then they're gonna continue to buy. If it's expensive, or there's gonna be a change on the horizon that will cause the value of that currency to potentially change, yeah? They're trying to get ahead of the curve. So um, with that being said, um, looking at also as well conver convergence and uh, divergence, one of the things that you need to understand as well um, is um, if you can place your currency, you know where your currency is and where it's likely to go in the future, right? In terms of is it likely to continue to appreciate or as a ranked number one, two or three currency, or is it likely to actually remain, you know, for now, maybe one, two, three, but there are things on the horizon that could cause it to devalue before it gets to six, seven and eight. And we obviously anticipate that we can determine what currencies are best to trade, right? So one of the things that we typically look for is either convergence or divergence trades, where a currency is likely to continue to appreciate versus a currency that is likely to continue to devalue or depreciate. Or convergence is when we have a currency that is that was actually expensive um, uh, and now it could actually start to devalue versus a currency yeah, that was actually devalued and now things have changed and value have changed, certain fundamental factors have changed that actually may cause it to revalue, right? And start to increase and appreciate in, um, in, in value, right? So again, there are times where you can trade one versus eight and buy one and sell eight. But there might be a time where you can actually uh, buy eight, yeah, and sell one. But if you don't understand, you know, the, the fundamentals and what's going on behind it, yeah, um, then just using the fundamental analysis spreadsheet and the data, the numbers behind it, um, at some point you're going to get lost and then you're going to start to blame, um, you know, me or saying the fundamentals don't work when truly, in, you know, it's, it's really just a, a gap in your knowledge and you not understanding how, in fact, uh, and putting all the, I guess, the pieces together, pieces of the puzzle together. So that is really important and just understanding the currency value cycle, where you are and where you're likely to go in the future. And so once we uh, establish uh, that, and one of the ways that we do establish that is by confirming you know, our fundamental bias with uh, bank analysis. And if you're part of the group, the mentoring group, you will have access to uh, many different um, uh, 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 analysis from banks like HSBC, Mizuho, um, Citibank, um, Wells Fargo, you know, the list goes on, probably maybe about 12, 13, 14 banks, you know, we look at, as well as understanding, um, you know, certain articles from, um, from Bloomberg, where, you know, um, and interviews where, you know, uh, places like, um, and articles and the publications, I guess is the word I'm looking for, like Bloomberg will interview money managers, hedge fund managers, um, from various, um, 
you know, institutions, and they will typically give their view on what they think is going to happen with certain currencies. So it's all right to have a bias, yeah, but that bias still needs to be confirmed by the banks because ultimately it's the banks that are the ones that are uh, moving the market and um, the market and I guess the currency markets are really just an auction um, between um, the institutions and market makers. Market makers are there to provide liquidity for the financial institutions to be able to buy and sell and avoid slippage and buy and sell for cheap, right? And um, and so when it goes, when it comes coming back to fundamental analysis, yes, it's okay to you know it's what well, I say it's okay, but it's not just good enough to look at the the numbers and say well that's it. You need to understand the currency value cycle what's coming on the horizon, what's likely to come on the horizon, um, you know, is a currency likely to still appreciate or is it likely to devalue or is it likely to continue to devalue or is it likely to, you know, revalue and then confirming that fundamental bias with, you know, several bank analysis. And what I'll say with that is, is that not all banks are going to have the same analysis, but what you want to do and what we do at Trading 180 is we look for the majority, right? So we go with the consensus. So let's say we look at just, a, let's just say for numbers sake, there's, you know, 10 banks that we look at, right? 10 bank analysis. And let's say, for example, eight of those uh, banks are saying, you know, continue to buy the dollar. Yeah. And two of two banks are saying, well, we're not so sure on a dollar or, you know, they're kind of contrarian. You know, contrarianism has its you know time and place, but you want to go with the money. We want to go with the big money. Go because because they're you know they're literally putting you know lots of money in their trade idea, right? They're not trying to put um, uh, mislead their clientele. They know that typically retail traders, the average retail trader, probably like ninety percent, ninety five percent of retail traders don't use fundamentals, don't read, you know what I mean? They're just they go towards the path of least resistance, which is only uh technical analysis. And so, you know, the information, yes, it's I wouldn't even say hidden in plain sight because they're not hiding anything. But they can basically put the information behind um, in free articles and even in you know behind articles and, and publications that have paywalls like Bloomberg for example but there's a reason for it and the reason why is because when the smart money talks you have to listen yeah you have to listen and in my years of trading um, you know I rarely have ever seen um, uh, any any serious money manager or any money manager um, and bank um, talk about you know technicals as as for the reasons why they're buying or selling a currency. No way. Maybe their entries and to time their entries, etc. Right, um, and maybe they're confirming maybe certain things with technicals, but the actual idea as to why they're opening positions would n is never based off of technical analysis. Absolutely not. Never, never, never. And if it is, then it's not worth, it's not a, a, a bank or anything um, or an institution that I'm going to ever follow. But um, but yeah, there are things, again, beyond the, uh, the, the, the spreadsheet data, yeah, that we need to be aware of. You know, bank forecasts um, and bank forecasts are a bit of a, um, I guess they aid us in understanding where you know if the currency is going to appreciate or depreciate right so euro dollar you look at euro look towards euro dollar forecasts and if the forecast is for example i think we're somewhere around parity at the moment but if it's for example going down to maybe the 96 cent area what it's saying is what they're typical what they're actually essentially saying is is that they think that the dollar is going to appreciate and the euro is going to continue to devalue right if the euro dollar starts to go from parity uh you know down to you know 0 0.9696 cents so forecasts are helpful um monetary policy yeah which isn't necessarily on the spreadsheet doesn't need to be doesn't have to be but monetary policy whether central banks are hiking holding um uh, or cutting rates yeah you need to be aware of that information isn't on the spreadsheet although you can look at the spreadsheet and derive the fact that the central what the central bank should be doing you can actually do that and we do do that but we also confirm 
um, with, with news articles, risk sentiment, so whether risk is on or whether risk is off, risk off sentiment being, um, and so let's say that would be another reason as to why you may want to, for example, buy the Japanese yen. Because looking at the, the data, let's say, for example, the Aussie yen is a great example of, of, of why you would want to buy eight and sell one because in a risk off environment meaning that you know when there's a lot of fear uncertainty and doubt in the market and where um traders are likely to put their money into you know safe you know safe haven assets and safe haven currencies and the, and the japanese yen uh historically has acted as a as a safe haven currency as has the uh, swiss franc although this year or over the past year it really hasn't but it typically does um if you don't understand risk sentiment, then buying one in a risk off environment isn't, you know, the greatest thing to do, right? You're going to be caught, you know, you should be caught offside or you typically would be caught offside. Yeah. Um, so buying eight, although from a fundamental analysis spreadsheet perspective, you shouldn't be buying, you know, eight. And I say you shouldn't, but just looking at the raw data, it would mean that, you know, eight would be typically signal that you would probably want to sell eight again if you don't understand what's going on uh from from you know beyond the price chart oh sorry to say the price chart but beyond the um fundamental analysis spreadsheet if you don't understand the nuances outside of the data then again you can be caught off side and also as well, there are changing nuances yeah, within uh, within uh, fundamental analysis as well. And I'll give you an example uh, of this. And an example would be um, if you are, you know, um, up on fundamental analysis and you're, you know, you, you've watched a, a lot of my videos and you're like, well, Leon, you know, I understand that when a central bank hikes rates, yeah, that is normally appreciative of a um, uh, of a currency right a currency should you know increase in value but in fact that is not always the case it is not always the case and what we've seen this year and if you've paid attention i guess to or you should have uh, been paying attention to maybe the pound if you're trading the pound dollar or any pound crosses is that sent you know the bank of england have been have been um have been hiking rates yet the pound dollar has been going down. Same thing with the euro dollar, right? Euro dollar has been going down against, you know, euro has been going down against the dollar. Why is that? Yeah, you know, you'd be, you'd, you'd say, well, Leon said, Leon said, Leon said that, you know, hiking rates means that um, uh, the, the currency should appreciate. But there are changing nuances, yeah, whether they're permanent or temporary um, is neither here nor there, but. Um, one thing you must understand is that there are environments where nuances will change. Now, one of the nuances would be uh, that has kind of changed is the fact, and it hasn't even really changed. I wouldn't even say it's changed. It's just something that you probably may not have been aware of if you don't understand, if you haven't gone into and mastered the fundamentals deep enough, is that um, hiking rates when the economy is... Um, actually uh, declining and going into the contraction and potentially, uh, you know, recession phase um, doesn't always or is less likely to appreciate a currency. You need to see the economy actually start to grow or continue growing in line with rate hikes in order for that currency to appreciate. Yeah. So again, there are some changing nuances and maybe changing might have been the wrong word but there are nuances that you need to be aware of yeah also and it does make sense when you understand you know what you're doing and what you're looking at and right now again you might be sitting there thinking well you know uh, well how am i supposed to know this stuff and um <laughs> you can know it right if you do join you know the mentoring because mentoring is required and there are things that you know I can hold your hand with, and I'm always um, you know in 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 the uh, Discord room, um, you know, free to ask questions, and I have a weekly um, Wednesday live call where you can always ask me these questions about what is going on in the market, and I share my views pretty much on a on a daily basis. And fundamentals don't really change too often as well. I just want to say this: fundamental biases don't change. And again, that is really backed up by um, one of my latest videos, which was 
um, which was this video, right? Shorting the euro dollar for 18 months, yeah? So I had a short bias, yeah, for on the euro, for, euro dollar for 18 months, and, 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 I, and I still do. And so, um, you know, it, it's not really, you know, about, about, you know, one week, or this week, you know, I want to be a buyer of the euro, and next week I want to be a seller of the euro, or today, or whatever it is. If you understand that, um, that fundamental biases typically don't really change regardless of what price is doing because price and value are, should not be confused many traders confuse price and value and price could be doing you know something different to your bias but what that ultimately means and that what that only means is that you know the price is getting cheaper if you want to be a buyer of something and prices are coming down, then you should really be jumping for joy. You shouldn't be thinking to yourself, well, why is price coming down? I mean, it's obviously a normal and natural uh, question to ask, right? Why is price coming down? Because is there a change in the fundamentals? So I definitely get that. But if there's no change in your in the fundamentals and there's no change to risk sentiment and central banks are continuing on their monetary policy cycle, etc., etc., and nothing has changed, but you're seeing price come down, yeah, and you want to be a buyer at a demand zone or support or a support zone, then in fact you should be looking at that as you know rubbing your hands and saying I've, I'm getting an opportunity to buy on a pullback, right? That's basically you know what um, uh, you know you should be thinking. And again, going back to fundamentals not changing um, too often. Um, sentiment can change, of course. Risk sentiment can change on and off just like this and like that, right? Again, even, even risk sentiment to a certain degree doesn't happen that often. It doesn't change week to week. Um, I, but there are obviously going to be moments, you know, geopolitical events and, um, and, and the like that may, you know, um, uh, uh, change, you know, sentiment. But overall, when you have a bias, right, on a currency pair, typically, you know, you won't change it from week to week. It might change maybe every three, six, nine months, potentially, right? But overall, you can have a fundamental bias on a currency pair, yeah? And you can have that bias for months, which then means that all you're looking for is uh, a trade in, you know, either a long or a short direction. And you don't necessarily have to worry about trying to catch tops and bottoms. All you're really looking to do is just looking for, um, you know, bargain prices and looking to buy at bargains, which um, is a lot easier than trying to predict, you know, uh, you know, where uh, prices are going to go from day to day or week to week and trying to catch consistently catch tops and bottoms because it's not really about that it's really about you know riding um, uh, the trend yeah because where was the money made yeah the money was made to the short side right in this downtrend yeah yeah there was opportunities and this is a daily chart and it might have been a week or two or three where you know prices went to the upside but when you zoom out and you actually look at where the money was made right and where you should have been riding the trend, it was to the downside. And this was, you know, uh, the most probable direction when you understand fundamental uh, analysis and you understand why you should have been, you know, shorting the euro and why you should have been buying the dollar. Yeah. And that starts off with understanding the fundamental analysis spreadsheet, currency, the currency value cycle, as well as um, uh, things beyond the data as well. And so another question I get finally is using day trading strategies with fundamentals. And um, my answer to that would be um, it, it all depends on your strategy now and where you anchor your, um, your uh, how often you trade. Now, so what I mean by that is this, is that you have... Fundamental analysis lends itself better to higher time frame analysis. And when I say higher time frame analysis, I'm talking about, for example, the daily as a as a bare minimum. And the reason why that is, is because and let me just um, actually I'll go to a price chart, go to a life price chart, I'll go to the euro dollar. Right. Um, and the reason why that is, is because if you look at where we are, yeah, well, if you look at where we are, we are at what would be considered an expensive area. This is very expensive, this 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 area here. 
yeah you're buying you're, you're, you're selling at lows basically you're buying the dollar if the if the dollar was the base currency and the euro was the quote currency you'd be buying at highs so i'll just uh, demonstrate that so if we're looking at uh usd eur yeah this is where you're buying and you don't really want to buy the dollar at highs yeah that's the that's really the wrong place you really want to start to look to buy the dollar you know at um you know at, 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 i guess what you could call uh higher lows yeah in that area there right that's the first area this would be another area that would be identified is where the demand zones are right this is where price was a recent bargain because prices went to the upside now if you are a five minute trader and you don't understand that you're buying at highs and you think that this area here yeah and this price zone here sorry guys don't know why my uh my uh, my Mac is uh, starting to uh, uh, struggle a little bit. But um, let's say you're a five-minute trader and you don't understand that, in fact, buying at maybe some sort of support zone, which would be maybe somewhere around here, potentially. You've got support, support there. Uh, let's just zoom out a little bit, yeah. So you've got that area where prices have been traded, support and resistance. If you don't understand that, on the daily time frame, even though prices are pulled back to that zone, that this is still an expensive area considering where we are in a daily time frame. Yeah. Yes, prices can could continue to go higher, but you don't want to be you just don't want to be a buyer at, at highs, right? You want price to prove that there's a bargain, go higher, and then wait for the pullback. You don't want to be the the the, the person that's buying uh, at highs. And again, depending on the short strategy you use, a breakout strategy, I don't know. Um, personally, I trade against breakout traders, um, so uh, I will never be a breakout trader. But if you're on a five-minute time frame chart and you're thinking to yourself that this is a good opportunity to buy, it might be technically, but from a value perspective, it's a horrible place to buy, an absolute horrible place to buy. And so, you know, the market is more driven by uh, liquidity in the short term and um, institutions will look towards the higher time frames and uh, trade uh, you know the higher time frames in terms of looking for bargains and looking for value yeah and up here is not a value is, is not a bargain in fact maybe that level there right you it might look great on a five minute chart but from a from an institutional perspective it's less likely to be a bargain because again if you're looking at where the dollar is yeah and the euro dollar is it's still at the highs so you've got several levels that you could be looking to trade on that five minute time frame chart and this could just be a pullback now you might lose you know five six seven trades in a row trying to get involved in all these different five minute time frame levels yeah and then you would turn around and say well fundamentals don't work but it well you know what if you're if you're going to trade five minute charts at, 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 and at market highs then what do you expect so you have to understand that the market can pull back for several hundred pips, but it can still maintain its um, its 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 trend. Case in point, yeah, the market pulled back from here in Ju on July fourteenth all the way down, pulled that pulled back maybe around about what's that? Um, maybe four hundred pips, yeah, pulled back four hundred, yeah, about four hundred pips, but the trend it was the dollar was still a buy. Yeah, the dollar was still a buy. So prices pulling back 400 pips doesn't signal a reversal. But you would never know that if you don't understand A, fundamentals, and B, um, you know, uh, the fact that fundamentals and uh, higher and combining that with you know the higher time frame analysis okay for that week or you know you 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 may not have had a trade or two but understand that when you do have a trade down at these lows at you know this maybe this demand zone right here yeah right there oh just would have missed out on that one maybe not or maybe some sort of intraday level or understanding that there was actually a potential trade in here i'm not going to go over it in fact i do remember it's around here but um you know understand that the pullback yeah there yeah that it pulled back several hundred pips is now a potential bargain and it worked out to be a bargain because we got this 
and we got this and we got this yeah so going back to the original question with regards to day trading strategies or fundamentals i would say yes what we do at trading 180 is we look at intraday time frames to for for setups but we always anchor always anchor our um our trades on the higher time frame levels either you know uh supply and demand or, or or stop hunts or what we could consider um cpr zones right we're always looking at those types of levels looking at where we are looking at where fair value is where the bargains are from a higher time frame perspective always got to look at the higher time frame perspective and that's where fundamentals lend itself best so and then for your entries you can go down to if you want to go down to a 15 minute a one hour etc once prices have come down then that makes all the sense in the world because you're not only buying at value and then you can time your entries and have great risk reward to the upside so that being said going back to my i guess the original uh, uh query which was um uh you know why i don't um, you know, maybe just uh, why can't I just sell this or give it away for free or whatever it is? I mean, giving it away for free would be, again, it wouldn't, it still wouldn't even do you any any good because if you don't know how to use it, right? If, you, if, you, if it isn't explained to you, and you know, it's, um, and even though this is explained to you, of course, there are, um, uh, I think, fundamental analysis requires mentoring because unlike, um, I guess technical analysis um it's it's a really a different ball game and i do think that you have to um uh really kind of get the experience of fundamental analysis in terms of whether you want to call it forward testing or you want to just just live through um uh, uh the uh, certain fundamental um environments certain risk sentiment environments to get the experience and then you actually know how to trade and a lot of traders in the group in fact have said that to me is that you know in theory you know we all know that maybe in a risk off environment this should happen and then in a risk on environment that should happen but you become you know traders become wiser and um you know can can time the market a lot better once they've been through certain environments right certain trading environments and so mentoring i think is something that all traders mustn't you know must have and this is not mentoring in terms of just you know this is just a chat room where you know hundreds of people were you know just spouting off nonsense about you know what they feel is um you know going to happen in the market i've been in well before i uh you know before i created trading 180 when i was a struggling trader um i did all that as well i joined many different you know chat rooms and it was just chaotic they're probably you know the same now maybe not who knows but the point is is that you know you can ask me questions directly you can ask the experienced traders uh in the group the profitable traders who who have been with me for for a while and who are lifetime members and who choose to stay in the trading 180 community to help other traders because they understand um you know what i've done for them and then they want to pay that energy on to other traders to help them also become uh profitable um you can ask us you know while you're actually going through the fundamentals and living it and seeing it play out in the market um, you know, we can hold your hand, we can guide you. And mentoring, for me anyway, is 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 so important. You know, I had a mentor. Um, for any of you who know uh, Mark Chapman, uh, who's a who's a mate of mine, but he started off uh, mentoring me back in a uh, twenty, maybe thirteen, twenty fourteen. My how time has flown. But um, without him and him mentoring me you know, it, I wouldn't have stood a chance. And many traders don't stand a chance without proper mentoring, right? Again, the word mentoring, you know, can be used loosely, you know, a chat room um, is not mentoring. You know, posting you know, trade signals is not mentoring, right? Because you're not learning, you're, you're, you're not learning to catch your own fish. You know, catch a man a fish, he eats for a day. Teach a man to fish, um, uh, he's for a lifetime, right? You're not learning how to fish. Someone's catching fish for you, which means that that's not really, you know, the point in mentoring. Mentoring is supposed to be me and you and the group 
all coming together, supporting each other, getting you to the place and getting you to that understanding so that if you want to go off and you know be an independent trader, then you can because you have all the tools, you have all the skills, you have all the experience and the knowledge um, to do that, right? Whereas many traders will be in a uh, in, in what they think is a is a is a group and a, and a chat room or whatever it is or a mentoring environment, and then if that trader decides to shut down the room, then they end up going on to other trade rooms because they didn't learn anything. They were just you know the the, the mentor was just or their supposed mentor was just providing them with signals, not giving them actually um, you know uh, the skills and the tools to actually be self sufficient. So. With that being said, I'm going to wrap up this video. That's the reason why I don't sell it and I don't give it um, I, I, and, I, and I will never sell it um, because it really will do you a disservice. You just you just be wasting money. What you need is an understanding of um, of, of the fundamentals and the mentoring from myself, as well as um, the traders, the experienced traders in the group to help to get you to where you want to be. Just having the fundamental spreadsheet, analysis spreadsheet is just not enough. And I'm not gonna do you a disservice. I'm not gonna do you know myself a disservice. Yeah, it might be short term money and I might sell hundreds of thousands of these, but that's not the point. Yeah, that's not the point because you're, you're just gonna go away jaded. You're gonna go away thinking that, well, you know what, it doesn't work, etc. And ultimately, um, I haven't gained anything from it, you know, um, as far as, yeah, I might be, you know, um, a, a bit richer for it, and I say richer, but I might have a, you know, a few, you know, money, more money in my pocket, but it doesn't do anything, um, you know, for the for the trading community. There's already enough scams out there and people being scammed left, right, and center. And, uh, you know, I've been scammed myself, so, uh, so I know, right? I know how that feels, and I would never, ever in life want to pass that on to, you know, that feeling and do that to any else there are psychopaths out there right <laughs> there are sociopaths and there are those people out there you know that that do those types of things that have no um that really have no uh, empathy or sympathy but um you know um from that perspective that's the reason why um uh, i don't and i feel that you do need uh mentoring and if you do want the mentoring then brilliant you know what i mean i'm here in terms of um uh well i only really open up for maybe a certain amount of time a year maybe about four times a year if you miss this mentoring period um go on the website and i'm closed then i will be open at some point but um you know maybe i might open every three months or so just so that i can focus on the traders that are already in the group and give my attention to those people because um, it's very difficult to uh, mentor people when they're coming in all at different times. I like to, you know, have maybe a week where I open up and then anyone who joins and I can, everyone can be on the same page. You know, can you imagine um, starting school like that where, you know, you start in September in the UK, we start a new school year in September and um, all of a sudden you're getting new students coming in in October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. It would be totally disruptive to whoever's teaching the class, right? Same thing with mentoring, you know, to do it effectively, yeah, it has to be done in groups, in batches. So that's the reason why I do, um, you know, mentoring in the way that I do. And I don't open up, you know, 24 seven, unlike, you know, some others, right? And again, each to their own. If you want to do that, then fine. But trust me, they're not going to, if, if anyone's doing that, they're not necessarily teaching you in the way that is uh, uh, is proper. And they're not going to be paying you the proper retention that, that, that is needed to get you to where you want to be as a trader. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope you found some value on this. Um, and uh, if you do feel that you want to uh, join Trading 180 and have a look and see if it is for you, um, there is currently a um, an opening until the 11th of uh, September, which I think is going to be the Sunday, and then I'm going to close it maybe for the rest of the year. I might open maybe in December. Depends. I might want a bit of a break, but um, there is an opportunity there. And uh, if not, I have plenty, by the way, plenty of videos. I would say um, definitely check out if you're a beginner. Um, the four fundamental analysis videos I would definitely recommend, although I have loads of videos on fundamental analysis, but just to kind of maybe just encompass everything or most things regarding fundamental ana fundamental analysis. This video here, which is Forex Fundamental Analysis Trading Course Beginner and Intermediate Traders. Uh, the next one would be um, this uh, title, which would be Forex Fundamental Analysis Full Course, right? Dollar Strategy in Under 60 Minutes. 
The next one would be my fundamental analysis webinar that I did earlier in the year, three steps to generating profitable Forex trade ideas. And then the uh, the last one would be, for example, uh, this one shorting the euro dollar for 18 months, um, Forex fundamental analysis masterclass. And again, I have so many different fundamental analysis videos, but I would say start with those. And um, hopefully those free videos, you know, you get enough out of those to actually turn your trading around. If you are struggling, that would be brilliant. But if you do want some more, again, the mentoring will be open only for a certain um, period of time. And um, if I work with you, I look forward to working with you. If I don't um, in this period, maybe the next time, or if I never work with you, I just sincerely wish you all the best uh, with your trading, uh, on your trading journey, your trading endeavors, because I 100% I understand how difficult it is and, and the noise and the nonsense uh, that's out there. And uh, yeah, wish you all the best, guys. Uh, take care until the next video.